morning, everyone. Um, I hope you are well on this beautiful morning. Um, I'm thinking of all of my siblings in Christ who might have snow on the ground here in upstate New York. Um, I woke up this morning with some trepidation, looking out the window and wondering um, if we would have some here in Syracuse. And at least in, in my part, uh, north of Syracuse, we don't have a lot. And I will uh, admit I'm sort of thankful for that. Uh, but for those of you who do, um, I hope that uh, you're okay with that this morning. Uh, my name is Julie Grindall. I am the assistant to the Bishop for Candidacy and Mobility here in upstate New York, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. Um, I wanted to talk with you a little bit today <clears throat> about uh, joys and challenges that I've had this week, uh, and the hymn that I have brought uh, today sort of speaks to that. Um, so I think any week here in quarantine has its normal joys and challenges, right? We all sort of are on a little bit of a roller coaster, I think, but this one had some bigger ones than normal because church, at least uh, we started to hear more and more about um, reopening our churches and reopening our buildings and what that was going to mean and, and the wondering questions around that, uh, especially what that might mean um, about how we could worship. Um, would we be able to sing together safely? Um, you know, those things that really sort of rocked my world, certainly a little bit. Um, and I think a lot of the people um, in our synod and how we would be just able to be together in the same room safely. I mean, I want to see all of you. I wanna be with you, I wanna hug you, I want to be able to say hi to you. And so as I was thinking about that, and it was maybe getting me down uh, a little bit, I came across um, the Hebrews 8, or 13, 8 text, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Uh, and then I came uh, to the John 1 text that I love so much that I'm going to read. Uh, just John 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And between those two readings, uh, this hymn sort of popped into my mind, O Christ the and I think my lovely husband has pinned both the text and a picture of the hymn um, into the comments for you to take a look at it. It is in the ELW. It was also in With One Voice um, under a different tune. But the reason it popped into my head is because I think in my heart of hearts, I was hoping for a different future a little bit sooner, right? I was hoping for a future that would include all of you in it way faster, a different future where we could be together in worship and in community and where we could be communing together and singing together. And that's just not gonna happen quite as fast as I had hoped. And so this hymn text um, brought me back to a reality that's kind of um, a beautiful reality that I needed to hear. Um, if you'll take a look at it, you don't have to right now if you don't want to, but um, what it gave to me so thinking that Christ has been there from the very beginning, right? From the creation of the world as the word. O oh, Christ, the same through all our stories, pages, our loves and hopes, our failures and our fears. And then if you look to the end of that stanza, the way this hymn is set up, each stanza ends with in thanksgiving. And so the end of the first stanza says we bring our thanks for all our yesterdays, right? So it's looking back over the work of creation and the yesterdays that, that we have been blessed to have in Christ. The second stanza, O Christ the same, the friend of sinners sharing our inmost thoughts, the secrets none can hide. And then it goes on to talk about the work that Christ did incarnationally, right? Taking on our human bodies and suffering uh, in our place. And then at the end, the thanksgiving is for the present day. We have this 
uh, tool that we were given in a staff meeting a few weeks ago that said when things seem really out of control, sometimes the only thing we can do is focus on what day it is and what time it is. So we give thanks for this present day. I would go so far as to say the present minute, the present hour. And then finally, the third stanza, O Christ the same, secure within whose keeping our lives and loves, our days and years remain, our work and rest, our waking and our sleeping, our calm and storm, our pleasure and our pain. And it goes on to talk about the hope that we have in Christ and the trust that we're going to have in that future that we don't know about yet. And of course, as I said earlier, I was planning a future that may not be happening. And so this hymn sort of recentered me a little bit because then at the end of that third stanza, it said, it says, we bring our thanks for all that is to be. And so I'm encouraging you today, as I just ran through that hymn really fast, and this may be a new hymn for you, you may want to take some time later to look back through the text of this hymn and look at some of the words in it and say, you know, what words in this hymn bring meaning to me today? Is there anything out of this that, that I'm going to take and say this is perhaps something that's helpful for me uh, in this journey, especially when we're still behind our doors and not able to be together? And I'm going to offer a short story um, and meditation. I've used this book before, Crossings, by Susan Sherwin, another one of our very gifted hymn writers, before I sing the hymn for you so that if you would like to sing this hymn, we can sing it together. Um, it's a poem she wrote called Growth, and I love it because it brings science uh, sort of into our present time and refocuses us into the present. And she brings her little thoughts about that John 1 text that I shared with you just a moment ago. So she says, near the turn of the century, Albert Einstein sat at his desk in the patent office of Bern and placed himself in this thought experiment. He thought, if I sat astride a beam of light traveling at the speed of light, how would reality appear to me? And Susan says in parentheses, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Einstein imagined, as physicists now believe, that at the speed of light, the past and the future thin until they are engulfed by an ever-widening, eventually everlasting present. The world of light is the world of now. Walk as children of the light. Perhaps then, to walk as children of the light is to walk as people aware mindful, abundantly alive, is a widening, everlasting, beautifully redeemed moment. I commend that to you today. I commend this hymn to you today, O Christ the Same. Feel free to sing along as you go about your day. Come back to this later if you would like. If it's a new hymn to you, Come back to this a number of times to sing it for yourself. Um, and and uh, I played it through almost in its entirety at the beginning of this, if you, if you want to hear it again and, and do this later today. Um, but I, I think this could become a, a lasting hymn for you, potentially, if, if it's new today. So blessings on your day today. Eternal
for hanging on a little bit past our normal day. Blessings on your day, friends, and I'll see you next week.